said I was going to start training for a 5k and I was going to start running and hybrid training and that lasted for all of about a week because my body just absolutely cannot handle that and by the end of the week I was physically in so much pain and distress that I haven't worked out in the last week or so. It's not to say that my workouts were bad or that I did too much too soon in terms of my training. My body with Hashimoto's and trying to heal its hormones just literally couldn't handle it and not to be dramatic but I felt the worst that I have I think like ever in my entire life. So learn my lesson. Hybrid training and running is not for me at least right now. So I packed myself up and I came to Tulum. Okay, just kidding. I had this trip planned, but it was kind of a last minute plan. My best friend and I were texting like three weeks ago and she was going to go to the last day of Somna and then she invited me because I already had tickets and I had a flight credit on Southwest and my flight was $25. So like, absolutely. I will say that it came at kind of a perfect time because I didn't know that I was going to feel like total dog shit and I just needed a week to unplug. I'm not not working. I'm still doing check-ins and stuff here, but I needed a week to just be and breathe and get out of my normal routine. And Tulum is one of my favorite places in the world to do it. I love not only like the beachy jungle vibes, but I love the culture and the people here as well as the food. I feel so much better eating all of the food here. There's not as many preservatives or just artificial bullshit. Not that I eat a ton of that anyway, but I swear the way that food is processed in America just kind of makes me feel a little bit more like shit than other places. So this is my third day here in Tulum. I got here on Tuesday night and I traveled here all by myself. I got a transportation service from the airport to the Airbnb, which I 10 out of 10 recommend. I'm going to drop the name of the company in the description because they were so amazing. They made me feel so safe, especially as a single female traveler. And they were pretty reasonably priced considering that I had my own transportation vehicle and I wasn't on some sort of public shuttle or bus and it was a direct route. So what normally would take like three to four hours on a shared route or a shared bus ended up taking me like an hour and a half from the Cancun airport. Or to Tulum. And today is Friday. We're going to be going to the hotel zone, which is down by the beach. We are in Aldea Zama right now, which is kind of like a little bit more inland. And honestly, I feel a lot safer here to like walk around and stuff. But all of the fun like day clubs and nightclubs and party stuff is closer to the beach. So we're going to do that. We're going to go to a restaurant. I think we're going to go to a club called Bagaloom tonight. I've never been there, but Kendall and Mikhail said that it's fantastic. So I'm really excited to check it out. And I thought I would take you guys through a full day of eating, day in the life here in Tulum as I am just in full healing sloth koala mode. I'm gonna do a separate video on my hormones and where I'm currently at, but I got my Dutch test results back last week and they were just <laughs> not good at all. To be honest, I don't think I've ever seen a Dutch test that was quite that fucked up. So I really, really have to commit to this whole healing process. I can't do this whole start to feel better and jump back into how I was living before because that's just not going to work. I'm going to have to reconfigure my habits to be able to support internal healing because when people go into a hormone healing journey, the biggest thing that you have to recognize is that it's going to take you just about as long as it took to fuck you up to fix it. And for me, who hasn't had a menstrual cycle in like a year and a half plus at this point, it's gonna take a hot minute and I can't just expect that I can go into running and go back to training hard and be fine. And I really like to think that I can and I just continue down this spiral of not feeling good, starting to feel good. Goes back to what I was doing, not feeling good. So we're cutting it here and we, are embodying koala woman. I'm so excited to be kicking it off here in Tulum because I'm recognizing little patterns and things that are coming up of how I operate and how I work so that I can take that back to me with Las Vegas when I get home and continue my koala journey. So on top of all of the amazing, less processed, good for you food here, I have been sleeping eight plus hours a night. This last night was the least amount of sleep that I got and it was still like seven and a half hours, which is more than I was getting at home. So I'm feeling incredible there. I haven't worked out and honestly, I don't even feel bad about it because my body feels so much better. The amount of inflammation that has dropped off of me since I got here has been insane. Also just being here in Tulum, there's a lot of different things that I have access to, like a bunch of different green juices. Yesterday I got an activated charcoal coconut water, which was so good and activated charcoal while like, yeah, it's kind of gimmicky. It is a binder and helps to like excrete bad stuff from your gut. It does support detox, which is everything that I'm trying to do right now. Because my Dutch test also showed that my liver's kind of thinning. So we're working on that. So now that I'm done with my makeup, I'm gonna wait for Kettle to be done with her call and then we'll walk to the coffee shop. I'll show you what I end up getting there. We usually do a little superset of a juice and a coffee since we just had breakfast, but 
can always eat, so if they have something good, I might also get something there. <laughs> because they do contain a little bit more pulp. And when you have pulp, that's actually where you're getting like the fiber and all of those benefits from the vegetables or the fruit. In this juice, I have, it's a green juice, but I also have carrot and beet and ginger. So this is basically like all of the vegetables that I would normally eat in a day in here. I'll still eat my vegetables for the day, but at least this has some sort of fiber and it's not just like straight juice been sitting there working for a minute and I really want a decaf but they didn't have decaf and I'm full hormone healing era right now so just getting a measly shot of espresso is just not in the cards so we're gonna go try and find some sort of decaf situation that is officially the third place that I have been to that does not have decaf so my decaf exploration is over we're just gonna get some food instead <laughs> to come home instead of getting something out to eat we just like weren't really vibing with any of the menus we wanted more of a lunch vibe instead of like a breakfasty vibe so we're home we're gonna be making some steak and then you guys saw that i picked up some papaya a peach and now we had decaf so i got my own decaf to make a little latte situation at home and the sun finally came out so i think we're gonna lay out for a little bit after we eat lunch and then we'll see what we get up to for the rest of the day. I'm feeling really good after that green juice though. There's something about having a green juice and just knowing that you've got so many nutrients into your body. I feel so healthy, so chaloon, so good. And I'm gonna have a weird ass lunch with steak and fruit, but it'll be good. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Cut that shit out, boy. 
very cute. Little sandals. Sandals are from Shein, so we love that. They're gonna be comfortable enough to walk around by the night. To also go to the beach as well. Saturday and yesterday we just recovered all day long and I wanted to wrap up the vlog and talk to you guys about how I've been eating and then also some takeaways from this trip and how I'm going to carry it over into when I get home. When I came to Tulum not only was it to see my best friend and hang out but it was also to really just get a reset and take a step back from my everyday life because however I was operating was just not working and was not conducive to my overall health and well-being. When I got my Dutch test results back, I was pretty discouraged with how they came back. I thought that I was on the right track, but I will say that the week before I actually got them back, I did start training for a 5K and I started ramping up the intensity of my training and my body just was straight up not having a good time. So I have learned that this season is just not a time for me to be pushing myself in any sense. It is a time for rest and a relaxation and pulling back into myself and giving my body what it actually needs. For the majority of my life, I have been a rise and grind kind of woman. I jumped right out of bed and went straight to school and work and online business and then homework and then straight to bed and then right back up again and operating that way for so long and dieting every single year. And then especially coming out of prep, my body has just had it, right? Like I need to listen to my body and this is my body's way of forcing me to pull back. It did come back kind of heavy at first, but honestly, I'm really grateful for the wake up call. And I think that this is ultimately going to help me cultivate a truly healthy and balanced lifestyle and one that I truly, truly enjoy. So my first big takeaway from this Tulum trip is how I eat. I feel like I have been really diving into the whole eat paleo and higher fat and lower carb for Hashimoto's, which is great. And I definitely feel so much better with having more fats in my diet but I feel like I am excluding foods from my diet because of the higher fat intake. And I really love fruit. <laughs> I really, really love fruit. And I find myself having not eaten as much of it because I'm like trying to keep a relatively lower sugar diet and trying to focus on fats. But those are so good for your body. Like fruits provide so many micronutrients and fiber and are just really so good for you. And I really enjoy eating them. So instead of just focusing on like straight paleo and high fat, I'm going to make sure I'm getting adequate fats in my diet probably a minimum of like 80, 90 grams, but then also really paying attention to my body and giving it what it needs. My second takeaway is that I think I might start fully intuitive eating, like taking a full pullback from tracking for a while until I get my internal health where it needs to be and just pay attention to my hunger 
and my fullness cues and really just eat without restriction. I feel like this is going to go hand in hand with healing my hormones because I'm going to have to be so in tune with how I'm feeling to know if the treatment is working and to know if my body is truly feeling better. And I feel like the best way to do that is going to be to eat to my hunger and not overthink it. That being said, I have tracked for the last like seven years of my life. And I think that that is a prerequisite to be able to successfully intuitively eat and still maintain performance or cognition or internal health or whatever your goal may be. You have to know what's actually in the food that you're eating to make sure that you're getting enough of the right foods to do so. So I'm going to toy around with it when I get home. Sometimes I intuitively don't eat enough. I'll just get like sucked into a work hole or I don't even think about it. And if that's the case, I will go back to tracking just like calories and protein. But I really do want to push myself to be able to successfully fully step away from tracking at least for like two or three times a week. My third takeaway is that the way that I have been operating in my day-to-day -day life is a little bit more stressful than I realized and there's really no reason for me to be doing that. So I've noticed that when I get into a role with content or check-ins or even just like work, my heart rate will start to increase and I start to breathe a little bit more shallow and I transition from a parasympathetic state into a sympathetic state. And that's not where I need to be. So I've been checking myself and taking more of a deep breath in and holding it and a deep breath out. I'm going to start meditating at least once a day. If not also when I catch myself in those moments, I'll just take five minutes to deep breath in, deep breath out and actually calm myself down. And this was a really big realization for me because I feel like I'm not like super stressed out all of the time, but apparently my body is. So paying more attention to that and checking in with myself to ground myself in the present moment is going to be really helpful, not only for my mental space, but also for my physical body to support healing. And my last takeaway is that I think I really do need more sleep more regularly. I don't get any less than like seven hours of sleep a night, but here I've been sleeping eight plus hours a night and my body has been feeling pretty good on it. While you're in a healing state, your body genuinely does just need more rest and more recovery. So waking up super early or setting early alarms is just not conducive to where I'm at right now. So when I get home, I am going to go to bed a little bit earlier and allow myself to sleep in a little bit later so that I'm not jumping out of bed and jumping into work and jumping on my phone. I'm going to sleep in. I'm going to stay off my phone in the mornings. I'm going to do some meditation, some journaling work, and really just checking in with myself before I get into all of the other things that I have to do in the day. And lastly, what I'm going to do is be better at planning ahead with my work-related tasks, as well as my life-related tasks like meal prep or grocery shopping or other things to do around the house. I find that when I wait until the day of, it does add unnecessary added little things that just pile up and create stress during my day. And if I'm proactive instead of reactive about it, it will also help my body be in a less stressed out, more parasympathetic state. So this trip was absolutely everything and more. My heart is so full. I was getting the itch to go to the beach and it just worked out so beautifully that I got to go with my best friend and go to Zamna and really just take a step back to reevaluate everything that I've been doing and how I've been operating. And it was a really good wake up call. I'm so grateful for all of it. And I am excited to see what I can do to support my healing going forward, not only in the foods that I eat and how I nourish my body and how I move my body. I have not been excited to go to the gym for like weeks and weeks and weeks. So the fact that I'm excited to go home and actually move my body is amazing. And I'm so grateful for it but also in how I operate in my day-to-day -day tasks. Because you can do the big things like change your diet and change the way that you're working out, but it's in the everyday little moments and how you talk to yourself and how you operate that are truly going to make the difference in the short term and then also in your long-term health goals. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and saw some good eats here in Tulum. Let me know your favorite places to travel and your favorite foods to get while you are there. Leaving here, I am quite physically a massive bowl of fruit and I'm not mad about it at all. Make sure that you guys like this video and subscribe for more as I document my hormone healing journey.